Hey everyone, I want to tell you all about the engineering and design process today and how we can use the engineering and design process or EDP to really buff up our STEM learning. We hear a lot about STEM learning and STEM challenges. I feel like those are really popular with our kids and with our students because they're fun, they're hands-on, it's engaging and it's science. And there's nothing wrong with a STEM project in and of itself, but I want to introduce you to the engineering and design process, a way that we can take STEM challenges and uh, achieve those higher levels of learning that we really want our students and our children to be reaching. So what exactly is the engineering and design process? The engineering and design process, or the EDP, is the process through which engineers follow a series of steps to come up with a solution to a problem, usually by means of some kind of product or prototype that they design in order to solve the problem. The engineering and design process is not only limited to engineers, um, but engineers do use the engineering and design process to look at the problems that uh, a group of people may have, society may have, a business may have, and construct a positive and long-lasting solution. Uh, so now I want to show you what that process actually looks like spelled out for our kids and for our students. Here's a diagram that you can use with your elementary aged children or students or a middle school aged child that does not have experience working in with the engineering and design process and they're being introduced to it for the first time. This is the engineering and design process just simplified into five steps that are really easy for an elementary aged child to remember. You can come up with a really creative acronym to help your child remember. Um, there are lots of great options, but let's quickly go through those steps so you uh, understand what each of these things mean. So the first step is to ask, what is the problem? And then are there any criteria I must meet or constraints that I must adhere to? Step two is the imagining step, which this step in and of itself, I could do a whole lesson on, but essentially uh, this is the step where your child or your student would brainstorm all possible solutions, even the crazy ones, even the ones that might seem really out there. Some of the best ideas that we've had through history have been really out there ideas, um, but all solutions um, should be brainstormed and then your child would decide on the best one. This is a great place to add that if your child or your students can be working in groups, if that is, if that's at home with their siblings, with the family or with friends, if that's at school in a group of three or four, that camaraderie and collaboration can actually produce some really incredible ideas. So then step three, after they've imagined and brainstormed all the solutions, they pick the best one, then they start the planning process. The planning process is where they would sketch. This is a great place to incorporate virtual tools where they can sketch and design um, online or with a digital tool and then uh, plan and gather any materials. Once they've done so, then they start building, constructing a prototype. They would test their design and then uh, receive any feedback on their design on how well it works, which then uh, seamlessly moves into our improved step where they will reflect, how did my design work? Did it solve my problem? Did it meet the criteria and constraints involved? Uh, and is there something that I can do better to improve my design? If there is, I highly recommend you go through the process again. If there is a place within their design that they can improve, they should continue to go through this process until they are satisfied they have the best possible product that will solve their problem. So as you can see, this is a slightly different diagram, but I, I actually prefer this diagram because this one is much closer to the actual process that engineers use in their day-to-day -day life, and it uses the same vocabulary that an engineer would use, um, specifically words like prototype, uh, iterate, communicate solutions, uh, constraints and criteria, and then incorporating things like time, money, and materials. All of those things, oh, this is a much closer representation of the engineering design process. And I find that this is very appropriate to use with students who have worked with the process in the past. Uh, I use this with my middle school age students and uh, beginning high school level. So I highly recommend 
that this is the, the chart that you would refer to. Otherwise, um, all of the steps and things are, are essentially the exact same. The process is the exact same. This just breaks it down into its, into its uh, critical pieces. This particular diagram I found on the PBS website and they have lots of other great resources to use if you are looking to teach the engineering and design process through really engaging lessons, then I recommend you use that source that's at the bottom of the screen and look into it yourself. So what is the difference between a STEM challenge and the engineering and design process? The elements of each are, are actually quite different. A STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Anything that's labeled as a STEM challenge should and, and, and probably does include at least two of those elements, science and engineering, technology and math, or so on and so on. Um, but that's actually all that means. A STEM challenge, all that means is that it incorporates elements of science, te technology, engineering, and or mathematics. Whereas the engineering and design process is a series of steps that one would follow to design a solution to a problem. I highly recommend uh, vetting any STEM challenge that you want to try with your kids at home or if you want to try with your students in the classroom and make sure that there is uh, some analysis, some open-ended problem-solving, question-answering product that is not only created, because a lot of STEM challenges there is something that is created, um, but that you also take the time to design and make a plan test that prototype and then go back and improve upon it and repeat those steps over and over again reflecting on the on their design gathering feedback about their design and then uh, improving upon it the next video that I'm going to put out uh, tomorrow, I do want to take you through a STEM challenge of some really popular ones that perhaps you've even seen on Pinterest or on Facebook, and how can we take those and uh, just edit and revise them a bit so that they are incorporating all steps of the engineering and design process, and your students or your children can uh, start thinking like engineers. So tune in tomorrow when I post our next video on how can I take a STEM challenge and adapt it for the engineering and design process. I'll see you soon.